What up, what up, you guys? Rasati out here in Singapore, and yeah, don't mind the voice. It's been one of those nights. Um, back on here, super excited. It couldn't be more kismet if I even planned it that way, because I really didn't. Um, I should have done this yesterday, but I ended up doing it today instead. It is November 22nd, 1122, and I feel pretty good about that. Um, it is my 600th episode, you guys. I can't believe I've gotten here. I don't know what it was that made me really kick my ass into gear this year. I think it was making up for a lot of missed episodes from last year, and I feel great. I feel really, really great. I feel like I've come into my purpose a little bit more. I feel like I'm in tune with the people here in Singapore, uh, what's needed, who, uh, who really is suffering as a demographic and what they tend to suffer from because I've made sure that I've kind of gotten back into the scene itself. It's real easy to say you've controlled your temper and you've conquered your temper, you've mastered all of those, you know, those crazy emotions when you're away from all the things that trigger you, right? But for me to be able to really let you know that, hey, I understand and I, I'm getting to know the the landscape here in Singapore, the culture, the climate, all of that um, as far as emotions and communication and just human relations in general and I feel pretty good about that so I wanted to talk to you about familiar patterns because I see it happen over and over again unfortunately the minute we have one relationship and that's any relationship right your first relationships are with your parents and then if you have siblings it's with them and then of course you know school teachers all that comes in afterwards but if you notice your first few influences relationships tend to paint the rest of them your first few relationships kind of give you the base uh the base baseline blueprint i don't know what i want to call it blueprint maybe let's go with that the blueprint for how you treat people in the future it's kind of like okay these are your rules of operation or standards of procedure if you will and because my mom taught me this is the way the world is and this is the way my dad taught me to you know um, respond to people uh, either through their behaviors or physically or verbally telling you this is the way things are that's how everything starts but if you think about it your romantic relationships are a lot like that as well I talk to a lot of people lately and they're like, you know what, I seem to find the same situations over and over again, the same kinds of people, you know, emotionally unavailable men, uh, women who are just out to use me, like all kinds of stuff like that, right? So I, I totally get it. But what ends up happening is you tend to fall into the same patterns. And whether you meet someone who's not like your exes or not, somehow or another, if you're not aware, if you're not careful, you tend to treat them in accordance with what you're used to. It's almost like uh, an artist who uses his favorite colors only and doesn't want to venture out into something new. Uh, we like our comfort zone. We like things that we understand. And for some reason, we tend to treat people the same way. We never give anyone a blank slate unless we are very, very aware of the fact that they are not the same as the last few people that you've been with, right? Case in point, I have a young lady that I speak to over, um, off and on, and she's been having a little trouble in, uh, in the romance department and she'll tell me you know I met this guy he's really sweet and everything and I don't want it to be a physical kind of relationship only I want it to be more than that but it also depends on where you're looking for these people what is the criteria you're putting out there as far as how you're trying to find this significant uh, this potential significant other once you get into that you know friendship stage because I've had another young lady tell me hey you know friendship is friendship and once they decide they love me then it's a, a romantic relationship you know what that's your belief that's how you run your life perfect but now that you've made that distinction there's a reason why you've never been in a romantic relationship it doesn't proceed past a certain point because either you're not letting it because you're not open to the idea that they might be different or you really are genuinely scared they are different and you like kind of pull away from them right um but what was I saying? So this young lady, uh, she doesn't want it to be purely physical. She wants to make sure that the other person respects her. She has a lot of intellect that she wants to share. She's um, she's just trying to, she's looking for a companion, somebody to walk with her through life and to witness the things that she's up to and to be able to share those dreams and hopes and, and plans that she's got for her life and to accept the same from the other person. But a lot of times, if you don't get love the way you're used to, you will sabotage until you do. So, she was, uh, there was another young lady I was talking to and she was talking about, you know, she has a co-worker at work, right? And they have a lot of trouble with the fact that she likes to listen to music. It's not that the music is inappropriate, but she likes to listen to it with headphones on because she doesn't really want to disturb everyone around her. And it's not a situation where she um, 
is in front of clients all day. So it's not like she's sitting at a front desk with her headphones on. She's in a back office, you know, minding her business, doing her work. But she likes the music to kind of keep her awake because it's mundane work. And she wants to, you know, to, to lift her spirits a little bit. That's what music is good for. But the supervisor that she works with tends to um, harp on her about the headphones because she believes that it would be really difficult for anyone to hear her if she called because of the headphones. And it's not necessarily because this young lady has proven that that's the case. If I listen to headphones and you call me, I won't be able to hear you. It's the fact that she's had other employees who've done the same thing and that problem has risen. So in that specific instance, right, I would advise you to, as if you were in the supervisor's place, to tell them, hey, I've had this happen before. I've had other employees in your position listen to music with headphones on and my concern is that if you do that and I call you, you will not respond because you can't hear me. Once you tell them that that's the concern, it's up to them to either prove you wrong or right. So why not give them the benefit of the doubt and let them show you that they've taken into account what you've told them and are making space for the the moment where you might be calling them and they're prepared to answer you, right? So it's up to them to manage the noise level inside their headphones, maybe put one earpiece in and the other one out. Whatever the case may be, it's up to them to manage your expectations at that point because you've voiced the concern. Same thing in relationships. A lot of times we have relationships where, you know, you've been cheated on before and you know what the trigger was in the last relationship. Maybe it was uh, that moment when you realized that they were suddenly going out and buying new things for themselves. Um, A lot of times in relationships when you've been in a long-term situation, uh, people tend to get complacent and comfortable and they don't, you know, they don't really groom the way they used to when you were first courting, right? They don't, take efforts or pains to to get dressed up, make up all, you know, find new clothes. They don't do all that unless it's like something in their character where they do it anyway. Um, a lot of times things will settle into a pattern, excuse me, a pattern. And once somebody breaks a pattern, it's normally a red flag for people. And they're like, oh my God, what's going on? What changed with you? I want to know. So then they get suspicious. But it's not fair for you to automatically assume that that's what's going to happen in this relationship if it's a completely new person. So if you don't voice the concern, hey, I noticed that you're out buying new underwear or whatever, and um, I'm concerned. I'm not saying you're capable of this, but I'm saying in my past relationships, I've seen this happen, and this is what ended up happening. That is my concern. Please bear that in mind. And at least if you've voiced the concern, and they then it's up to them to manage the expectation. But if you've noticed in all of these situations, there is a pattern. It's your pattern. It's what you're predicting will happen. It's like watching a movie, right? You've watched millions of movies, and what do we do? We start watching the movie and start predicting. I know, based on camera angles, if I see more of the background than I do of the subject, that something's going on, I need to pay attention in the background. Stuff like that, right? But it's not always the case. Uh, just because there is a uh, intro, uh, what is it? Ascending action, climax, descending action and conclusion you know what I mean but there's like there's normally a process to follow in a movie right if I painted every movie with that same brush I would be surprised because there are a lot of movies out there that that are aren't even predictable there are things that come out of left field and you had no idea it was going to happen the way that it did but that's what gets exciting about going to the movies is the is the reason we go continually after a while, the the whole slapstick comedy was not all that funny because it was everywhere, right? So they had to ad- adjust the genre. They had to bring in satire. They had to um, to add in other elements as far as comedy. Um, when it came to romance, you have, you know, the boy chases girl, girl to resist, girl ends up falling in love, boy resists, and then all of a sudden there's something that brings them together. So it's like that. Uh, Tamil movies kind of have not changed that much. Um, but the point is, you're looking to predict the same pattern. But what would happen if you stopped that habit and allowed yourself to be carried through the the journey of experiencing it with the character in the movie, experiencing something new, allowing for it to be a new experience? You don't know what could possibly happen. So... This episode today is about recognizing your patterns. Yes, we look for familiar patterns. We try to predict and make sure that, aha, I told you so, this is what was going to happen in the first place. It's a lot of those, it's a lot of those moments, right? It's a lot of those patterns. And it's the reason that we tend to keep in the same cycles, repeat the same lessons over and over. 
until we finally realize that we're tired of our own crap that we might be have we might have something to do with it and we try to break the pattern and find something new instead i really hope that made sense um i was a little distracted baby girl came in and left the room as well but i wanted to make sure that this was the message for today because I see it all too often and I'm not going to lie, I'm guilty as well. There are a lot of times where a baby girl is doing something and um, she's in the process of getting ready to whine and complain or throw a temper tantrum and I can see it coming and sometimes it is a temper tantrum and sometimes it's not. But if I don't voice the concern, hey, I see you starting, don't, uh, let's talk about this, let's let's not get all the way into a full-blown tantrum, let's let's discuss why it is that you're upset or not happy about um, whatever it is that's going on, and we try to manage it that way. So, my advice to you, try to be aware as much as possible, try to voice your concerns as soon as they come up, don't wait till later, as soon as they come up, and then allow the other person to take the information that you've given them into consideration and adjust their behavior. Once you've told them and they decide their behavior accordingly, then you decide, okay, do I need to tell them again? Do I need to tell them more information? Do I need to explain myself? How do I get to a place where I no longer have this concern? But it starts with you. It starts with that awareness of the fact that, you know, you recognize these patterns. It becomes a courage thing where you speak up and tell people, hey, I'm opening up to you. I'm telling you something that that could potentially hurt me. I'm trusting that you're not going to use it against me. I'm hoping instead that if you care about me and the relationship enough that you're going to adjust and accommodate somehow. And if you can't, maybe we discuss what else we could do in in an effort to kind of make make do with the situation that we have. So I hope that makes sense, you guys. I hope it gives you something else to chew on for a little while. But as always, I love you guys. I really, really appreciate the support. 600... Ah, it's a big feat for me. It's been an amazing journey so far and it's only just going to get better. I really, really do know that. So I'll talk to you again soon and y'all take care.